Hi everybody, I'm here today to make another video about the clinical manifestations of vitamin B12. And I'm going to share a case history here that's of personal interest to me because it was the first time that I actually saw the manifestations of B12 deficiency and then was able to test the person to put two and two together to see that indeed that actually was the case. So going back quite a long time ago, I had recently graduated from chiropractic school and I was speaking at a health event and I, I saw somebody there who I had met previously and at that event the person seemed a little bit run down, seemed a little tired, not quite as energetic as I had remembered them in, in a previous encounter when I met them before. And I also noticed after uh, interacting with them for a little while that they sort of had this constant shake going on. At first I thought maybe they were moving around or there was some music or whatever, but I noticed after a while that no matter what, there was just this sort of constant pulsing. And I started thinking about this and I started thinking, wow, you know, um, I remember learning in school that if somebody's low in vitamin B12, that that can lead to one, anemia, and number two, if the problem goes on for long enough, it can actually lead to neurological problems, such as what I was exhibiting in, in this person who I'll call Pat. So I started thinking about this and I thought, my gosh, maybe they're B12 deficient. That would explain both of the things that I saw, low energy from anemia and this, uh, this deficit. And I also remember learning in school that there are two basic types of tremors. There's what's called a resting tremor and also an intention tremor. So an intention tremor is when somebody goes to use their motor skills and motor neurons and all that stuff. And when they go to do that, when they intend to do something like an old person reaching for a glass and coming to uh, bring it up to their mouth, they'll shake. Okay, so sometimes it's, it's, you see that in older people that they go to do something and then they have a, a movements but when they're still, then they're totally still. The resting tremor is just that, they're resting, but they're not intending to do anything, but there's this constant pulse. And I thought, my gosh, you know, this, this could be what's going on. So I thought about it for a while, looked a few things up. I ended up contacting Pat about what I thought was going on because, you know, I was really concerned and I, I didn't want them to uh, continue to suffer with this issue. And I thought, my gosh, it might be as easy as getting some B12 in them and, and problem solved, you know, and hopefully all that stuff can reverse. I shared in my previous video that if B12 deficiency symptoms that lead to neurological problems are, are go on for long enough, some of those symptoms may actually be irreversible. And I didn't want that to happen, so I expressed my concern. And they were partially open to what I had to say, but they partially were not open to what I had to say. They were sort of um, in this camp that, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about nutrients because we can get them all from food. And, you know, there's all sorts of things that everyone complains about, or not everyone, but a lot of people complain about, about raw vegan diets. And most of them are complete nonsense. So they just kind of wrote this one off as nonsense. Oh, yeah, yeah, Rick's getting on the B12 bandwagon. And, uh, you know, with B12, though, it's a different issue. You got to have enough of that stuff. And if you don't, various issues can happen. Um, a few videos ago about B12, I shared my personal experience with methylmalonic acid, homocysteine, chlorella, spirulina, etc., etc. It's one of my most popular videos you can watch. And I mentioned in that video, and I'll mention again, back in 1999, when I was just out of school and I'd gotten some blood work done, I determined that I was actually low in vitamin B12. I was looking at, the, looking at it right here. I was low in B12, and my methylmalonic acid was elevated. That's supposed to be low. And my homocysteine was elevated. That's also supposed to be low. And I, I made a little comment in the PDF of my lab work that says this says, while these levels are clearly out of the reference range, and then I put in parentheses for fat, toxic Americans. In other words, I wasn't concerned that 
this thing says I'm low, but it really applies to me. I said, I have to wonder a little if there really is a problem. I have been a vegan for 11 years now, mostly raw, and I feel fantastic. I exercise a lot. I was running 25 to 30 miles a week at the time. I was going to the gym two to three times per week, and I was pretty pumped and pretty ripped, and I feel great. No indications of anemia or neurological problems. Now, this test didn't, this lab work didn't check for neurological problems, but it did check all the things where you could see anemia. None of that whatsoever. Um, nevertheless, I don't want to end up with any problems, so I'll see what I can do about this. And again, you can, you can watch my previous video about my personal experience and, and hear all about that. But I just want to let you all know I can appreciate, very much appreciate, where Pat was coming from. Because again, there's all sorts of stuff, well, you don't get enough protein and this and that. And most of it's just that those people are stuck in their own paradigm and they're not well educated and they make a lot of mistakes. But that doesn't mean that we should be stuck in our paradigm and make mistakes like not addressing B12 issues and getting to the point where we really cause ourselves significant problems. So in any case, um, I wasn't really able to get through to Pat. D despite my best efforts, despite a lot of time uh, educating, talking, explaining, um, expressing my concern, um, they just weren't convinced that what I was saying was accurate. And um, so finally, about uh, two years later, they gave me a call and they said, you know, Rick, something happened this morning and it totally freaked me out. I looked down and I felt this electric sensation down both of my arms. And I said, wow, <laughs> you know, that sounds pretty severe. And at the same time, though, it, it, it sort of struck a chord. It rung a bell, so to speak. And I remembered that it was, uh, we learned about that in, in chiropractic college. It was a neurological test. And I didn't remember all the details, but I knew it sounded familiar because we learn hundreds and hundreds of those tests. And if you don't use them regularly, you know, you, you tend to forget about things. So my wife was in chiropractic school at the time or had just recently graduated. And I uh, asked her, hey, what was this test? And uh, she remembered right away. She said, oh yeah, it's called Lermit sign. And it's a test for multiple sclerosis. Now, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune condition where some insulating covers around certain nerve fibers, collectively known as the myelin sheath, gets damaged by the immune system. And because that myelin sheath gets damaged, and because nerves can't conduct their electrical activity properly, there are various neurological deficits. So you, you put your head down, it stretches out the nerve fibers in your spinal cord and your neck, and you get this weird sensation down your arm. So why would this person have that? Well, because with vitamin B12 deficiency, that can also affect the myelin sheath of those nerve coverings. Now, in a different way than multiple sclerosis. With B12 deficiency, if you don't have enough B12 to activate folate to help cells renew and regenerate, then certain cells, including those that make up the myelin sheath, don't get regenerated, and over time, that myelin sheath wears out. And when the myelin sheath wears out, just like with MS, you can't conduct electrical activity properly, and you can get the same type of neurological issues. And by the way, there are case histories where people have had B12 deficiency, but then been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So that can happen too, but the thing is, you need to know what's going on because if you get diagnosed incorrectly, you're gonna be barking up the wrong tree, so to speak. If you're B12 deficient and you get diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, you'll go down the road of multiple sclerosis treatments, which the medical system hasn't been very effective at that, and even if they were, it wouldn't correct your B12 deficiency. Okay, then again, if you're B12 deficient, all you do is take some supplements and you, you start getting better. So in any case, they had that go on and they were finally convinced to get tested to see what was going on. And I was actually not happy that things had progressed to that point, but I was very happy to hear that they were willing to get tested 
to see what's going on and then that might help convince them that it's time to take a B12 supplement or address the issue so they don't have any further problems. So tested them for B12 and what we found is they were way, way, way out of range. So it was extremely clear at that point. You got the symptoms, then we do the test, you're out of range. Very, very clear that they were deficient in B12. Now, after that, they were interested in taking a B12 supplement and they did for a while and then they didn't. And then there was a lot of back and forth. Well, I'm not sure if this is the right thing uh, from them. They weren't sure if it was if B12 was the right thing or not. And, you know, this and that. And so we actually lost touch. So I don't know. I, you know, I don't know the details about giving a follow up about what happened. You know, I'd hear some things through the grapevine and it sounds like uh, for quite a while they weren't doing so well, but then they were doing better. And so I hope at this point they're doing great. You know, I hope they've taken B12 and, and a lot of their symptoms, hopefully all of them, but I'm not so sure because this seemed like a long standing, really major issue. But hopefully most, if not all their symptoms have resolved and they are doing better. So just a couple thoughts though about paradigms and beliefs because this was a central theme that came up in this case history. There are a lot of uneducated people in limited paradigms who have opinions about raw vegan diets, about how, you know, you're going to be protein deficient and you can't eat all those carbohydrates and that's going to make you fat and, you know, just all sorts of nonsense where the people have a little piece of information, but they miss the big picture and, you know, the saying a little bit of information is dangerous. So just because a lot of people are wrong a lot of the time about raw vegan nutrition doesn't mean that everybody's wrong about everything all of the time. In other words, just because there's complaints, vegans don't get enough protein and we know that's not true. That doesn't mean that there's, that our paradigm is perfect. Okay. That doesn't mean that no one can ever get B12 deficient because they can and they do and they have. And meat eaters can get B12 deficient too. But that doesn't mean that raw food vegans can't because they have and they do. So B12 is an issue for everybody and it needs to be addressed. It needs to be checked. And it's real easy to test for. Even if you don't want to test B12 directly, there are other things that you can look at. Even if you don't want to test B12 or methylmalonic acid or homocysteine, there's other things that educated clinicians can look at in super basic lab work that can tell you a lot about your B12 status, tell you if you're heading in the right direction or the wrong direction or what's going on. And in my practice, sometimes I'll recommend one or two of those tests and sometimes I'll recommend other ones. And there's some people out there that says this test is the best. And people are like, no, other people say, no, no, no. The other test is the best. And the thing is when, you know a little bit and maybe you're sort of a, a one nutrient pony, so to speak, or a one trick pony. You may think that this one test is the best, but when you're an educated clinician and you know how B12 relates to blood counts and anemia and other issues that you can also see on blood tests and, and other things that the person may have going on, you can utilize different things. So I recommend different tests depending on the situation. So in any case, what I would recommend to everybody is if, if you've got some good beliefs and you know they're true, don't let anyone talk you out of them. Stick with your convictions. But at the same time, be open-minded that your belief system may be able to expand and you can keep learning and keep refining and keep honing things down to get better and better and better. So what I like to say is you can approach everything with open-minded skepticism, or the other way of saying that is you can be skeptically open-minded. In other words, don't be gullible, but don't miss out on important things because some people are wrong some of the time. So I hope this has been useful and I hope you've learned some good things. I hope, I hope you have learned about the importance of vitamin B12 with this and my other videos that have preceded this one in my vitamin B12 series. 
And if you'd like to learn more about my lab testing and consulting services, as well as the educational opportunities in raw food nutrition that my wife, Dr. Karen Dina, and myself offer, please visit our website at rawfoodeducation.com. Thank you.